Now, I'm not going to take the piss, Daniel, because, you know, we had a, we had a, a conversation at lunch, but accountancy isn't perceived as sexy. And yet you went into that niche. What made you start going into that niche and thinking, actually, this is where I'm going to go and, and, and take my IT knowledge into? This is coming from the trained account. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, listen, I, did, I did that for one year. I did that for one year. I thought it was the most boring job in the world. Then I went to recruitment. But you're right. I did, I did do a, an accountancy uh, ACCA for a year. I found it very boring. Um, but there's money in it. There's no doubt about it. The, the reason I went into it, Daniel, because I thought it was going to be a great job and there's loads of money in it. It is a great job. In, in sorry, it's a safe job. Safe job. That's yeah. why people go into it. It's got a very well defined very well career. Paid, yeah. yeah, very well defined career path. It's not you know, and you can make reasonable money, and it's low risk, and it applies. Uh, that's definitely not your personality, but a typical accountant is that type of risk. You know, low risk profile, likes predictability, yeah. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, sorry, go, let's go back. So what? But what? What? Why made you? You know, you had a bar. You were, you were doing some stuff. Why made you go to a niche of that accountancy? So I spent, so I, I, I got myself onto the board of one of my clients where they had an IT director who didn't really work out. And I just said, I can But you hadn't this. had that background though, though. Yeah, but I'm a management consultant. I'm a trained, I, I have a totally unique skill set, which is I'm a trained Microsoft qualified engineer. I'm a management consultant that's come out of Deloitte and half of my degree was finance. Okay, so I did an IT, I did computer Quite science rounded. and finance. Yes, yeah, so I'm very rounded. So I can sit in a room and argue with the IT guy about IT and argue with the operations guy about business process and argue with the FD. You're not the person to bring into the board. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I get, no, but I have great, I would argue that I have a unique insight. Yeah. And so, in fact, when I left my job at Deloitte, there was the client went mental. They're like, no, 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 you can't leave. I was like, well, yeah. You're you. leaving. Yeah. Um, you know, so I have a really unique skill set, yeah. And so, um, so I got myself on the board of an accountancy firm, and I I worked on their board for three years, yeah. And I really helped them move things forward. And I have a motto, which is, "You hire us to get shit done." That is our motto. At that client, I sat on the board, and not only were we talking financials, not only was I leading IT, but I was helping them with the business, and we 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 achieved a lot. And and so. That was an amazing experience because I got real insight in the inner workings of how a firm works. Yeah, I probably spent a bit too long there because it was, it was meant to be a one day a week gig and I ended up spending being there two or three times a week. But so after a period of time, I said, you know what? Brilliant experience, but enough's enough. I need to work on my business. Yeah, because we got to a good scale. But also you don't want to have a customer who's too big. Nobody wins in that situation. Yeah, it's good advice that because, you know, I had... I had between 2003 and 2013, Cisco is my biggest customer and they were spending 25% of my turnover and they stopped in 2013 and they outsourced it and it was, it was horrendous. So I, I, I do agree with you. It's good to have a nice spread. Yeah, no, no, no it's not good. It's too much for power, them. isn't it? Well, it's not good for them because it's, so it's not good for them because you're dependent on them, et cetera. And it's not good for you because yeah, they can, you're out and then you lose a huge chunk of your business. So no one wins. No, yeah, nobody wins. It feels good at the time. I've been there. It feels good at Great the time. Great brand. I used to promote it all the yeah. time. But you know what? I had it for 10 years. And as soon as the tap turned off, it was a hard 12 months. It was a real hard 12 months yeah. to replace that. Because it was 25% of my turnover. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so I did that. And then I and then I, I, I finished that role and, and brought them in some successes. And then we were sitting in all these sales and marketing meetings. And all VARs and MSPs do this all the time. And I was just there like, what should we do for the next marketing campaign? Let's do a cloud migration. Let's do an Office 365 migration. Yeah. And if you read any sales book in the entire world, it's about what is your unique selling point. So your unique selling point is you're a recruiter, but you do MSPs. Yeah. So you get them. Yeah. So there is nothing unique about selling Office 365 or selling at the time. Everybody's doing that. Everyone's doing that. And, and as soon as you become generic as well, you're competing with all the big boys because Softcat and CDW, CW, Insight, SEC, yeah, exactly. they've all got huge it. budgets. And also they get funding of all the vendors that you don't get as well. Because yeah. they're doing more deals. Yeah. So then you're competing with them. So, well, good luck with that. Yeah. And so then we sat in a marketing meeting. And I said, hang on a second. Like it, it wasn't even the, it was just, a, I just had a moment. I just went, hang on a second. I've just spent four years in an accountancy firm 
We've got a really well-respected accountancy firm as a client. We had a couple of others on our books. I was like, let's just try accountancy. Let's just make... It's as simple as that. You, sh- you shifted on that basis. Yeah, because we we ran these bullshit, excuse my language, we ran these bullshit telemarketing campaigns funded by Microsoft. Microsoft went, here's this telemarketing campaign. Here you go. Here's 10 grand. Go and do a marketing campaign. How many leads? Five. We called them up. Jack shit. Yeah, nothing there. Complete. As we ran all these marketing campaigns, they just weren't getting anywhere. And 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 it's like that you like it's because you're not different. And then as soon as we did that, we very it ve- like if you don't do that, where do you start from a sales and marketing perspective? You've got a blank piece of paper. Okay, I've got a marketing budget of ten thousand pounds. What shall I do with it? Oh, let, like you end up you end up in the generic group. As soon as you say accountant, as soon as you pick a niche, you have a focus. And it's the same for you as well, isn't it? As soon as you have a focus, everyone gets it, yeah? So you're sitting in a sales meeting. Who should we sell to? Accountants. What event should we go to? Accountants. What should we do with our marketing? Sponsor accountancy. So suddenly the question of what is our USP or what do we do with our sales and marketing strategy is easy. And it's very so easy. Yeah, and everyone understands it. Do you think, Daniel, that it, that's... It's quite bespoke to yourself, isn't it? So your, your background, you'd been on the board of a, an accountancy firm. You've you've done. It was quite bespoke to you. Do you think that was that was the reason you did? Because that's quite hard to replicate, isn't it? Um, your your experience is quite hard to replicate for someone else. It is, and and that's why if you look at how the business has grown, um, we don't sell a lot of that top end consultancy. It's a, for me. It's about what do the customers really need, mm-hmm. and and also what can we scale, and what we can scale is MSP type services or managed service provider services for accountancy. And then, so what we do is we train our people in accountancy. And yes, they're not doing the level of advice that I was doing, but actually, a scalable and a valuable business isn't about that. Consultancy doesn't have a you know an enterprise value multiple managed service contracts cloud does so it's about then what is a valuable business and what is a business that if it were to be sold it would be value like i've always been given the advice your company should be sell ready every day of the week you shouldn't have to wait that these private equity guys come in or these corporate finance people come in and they're doing this and they're doing that you should be sell ready every day yeah and that means all these good books and records and good data and all this stuff and so if you want to be sell ready all the time, then everything should be about that. I asked you earlier about this, and um, I actually asked you off camera about this about the difference between an MSP and uh, <laughs> uh, let's say, let's call it a traditional reseller. Now, you said to me that you wouldn't be bothered if one of your customers was buying HP laptops from another bar. It's not the market you're going after. So but you're, you're trying to increase wallet share. Would you care if they're buying off someone else? Because those customers were thinking, actually, I want to eat Daniel's lunch. It's Are you unique. bothered, Daniel? Not in the slightest. Written. Okay. <laughs> not at all. It goes back to a value-based sell, yeah? At buying a piece of hardware, you're only going to buy off three manufacturers, yeah? They have their USP, which is HP or Dell or whoever, Lenovo, Lenovo yeah? yeah? yeah. They have their USP, which is they're a trusted brand. They build good quality. They're reliable. They have global network if it goes wrong, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's their bit. But when you're just reselling that, what value are you actually adding? Yeah? It just goes back to my point about being niche and being different. So if you're flogging a piece of hardware, you're not adding any value to the customer. You're just fulfilling a need. Would you say there's a lot of partners out there that are, let's call them box shifters, that want to outsource services and sell services. And there's a lot of service providers there that will go in to a customer and the entry um, level conversation is to sell laptops or whatever it is. But it's a what, bull- what do you see the difference? It's a bullshit conversation. You're an MD. Okay. Do you care who you buy your laptops from? Do, who I buy from? No. No. Okay. I don't care the brand, no. No. No, and do you care which reseller you buy them from? I buy them from a friend of actually, but I, I wouldn't really care. But I buy them from who I like. Yeah, I don't. I don't care the brand. I okay, don't care. you don't care who you buy. I them don't from. really care. Okay, no. if you had an IT company that helped motivate your sales team and drive more revenue, and helped you change your business, is that valuable to you? Yeah. There we go. 
So it's a completely different conversation. We are trying to be a partner. Yeah, you can be a supplier and you can be a market trader and you can supply. Serve, not Which services. is nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that at all. There's plenty of good businesses. Dell, Dell do a phenomenal job of it. Mm. I mean, Michael Dell is a very successful guy. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But, um, you know, it, it's a completely different relationship. We are trying to be indisposable to our clients. That is our objective. By adding so much value, they're like, I would never stop working with Daniel. 